too obsessed with anal because it's so dirty. <laughs> but terrified of like body hair. It's like I want to ram your butthole so hard that my cum shoots out of your mouth like a tasteful late 19th century fountain. <laughs> Is that a hair on your nipple? That's disgusting. <laughs> it's like if you crave the chocolate cave, like you are a second priority. <laughs> like it's a hardware store. Don't expect the coffee to be good. <laughs> um, I'm quite bad at sex. Nah, I'm kidding. I just said that to be relatable. <laughs> Casual sex, because like if you stick your dick down my throat, like eventually you'll touch my heart. <laughs> That's just biology. Um, so I'm a hooker. I wish my parents had reacted like that. Um, and look, I wasn't sure I was going to talk about it because I don't want to freak you out with my bodily autonomy. Um, but you know, I'm free advertising. <laughs> It works the other way too, you know, I'll be doing a handsy Heimlich with some businessman on his lunch break, like, oh yeah, you like that? You know what else you like? My podcast. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm actually really offended that you guys think I'm a podcaster. <laughs> um, but I just want to say that, like, ladies, you and I are no different. Like, we all have regrettable sex with other people's dads. It's just that I... <laughs> It's just that I get paid for it, you know, like, it's all the same. And some people like to say, like, oh, no little girl dreams of being a prostitute when she grows up. Like, no. Is that what you want? Because that's creepy as fuck. And also, like, no little girl dreams of being an HR manager. <laughs> like, kids have literally no concept of the world. Like, when I was a kid, um, I wanted to be a seal. <laughs> And then I had to grow up and face the harsh reality, which is that it's extremely difficult to make it as a seal in this economy. <laughs> Still get to play with balls, though. So <laughs> well, there's too much porn in the world. Um, like, like we're good. Like we're running out of oil, coal, but porn, like, like you guys can stop. Like it's okay. <laughs> and I also think that if, as an individual, you run out of porn, that indicates a problem greater than running out of porn. I'm not a psychologist, I'm just saying. But I think I'm going to pitch this as like a t-shirt to Greenpeace, but instead of like make love, not war, it'll be like make renewable energy resources, not videos of girls spitting in each other's mouths. <laughs> um, there's too much porn in the world, and also another issue I have with porn is that like there's not enough backstory, you know? I'm like, okay, she's the office slut, but how long has she been in administration? <laughs> what are her strengths in this role? <laughs> When is she going to be promoted to HR manager? <laughs> and like, why is this bitch wearing open-toed shoes in the office? Oh, that is a health and safety violation. And I can't get off to this, you know? Um, another problem with porn is like, I don't know if you guys know this, but it's not very realistic. Um, like, when I first had sex, I was most disappointed by how small my boyfriend's house was. <laughs> Like, where's the tasteful water feature I was promised? <laughs> oh, that's supposed to be me? <laughs> Wouldn't want to ruin your Batman do, mate. <laughs> I thought I would just finish with a couple of sex tips, um, you know, so that to impart some of my knowledge. To the, for, for the woman only, of course, because we already know that men are perfect at sex. <laughs> I mean, if your girlfriend just laughed at that joke, just, just think about that. Um, so here are some of my tips. Number one, try steamy shower sex if you're turned on by the thought of failing at shower sex. Or your hubby just took out a new life insurance premium. He slipped, you know, it happens. Um, these are hard times, like if you want a house these days, like an honest paying job doesn't cut it, I'm just saying. Um, my second tip is um, tr uh, give your man roadhead while you're driving. Yeah. Because this will show him that you're like excellent at multitasking or be the perfect mother to his future offspring. So, there you go. And my final piece of advice is like the first time you try anal, use tons of lube.
So much so that your boyfriend slides away from your butthole into the abyss. <laughs> and leaves you alone. You know, and if you're a woman in the audience and you're thinking like, oh, actually, I didn't like anal though, like, shut up. Like, you're a vocal minority, like a terrorist organisation. 